Ocean Software never made crap games. Fact. Okay, Highlander was pretty much a big turd fest, but that was farmed out to some software house who clearly didn't give two brown ones. Apart from Highlander, Ocean never made a crap game. Fact. Yeah, okay, that was crap. But it was kind of a crap TV show, wasn't it? I mean, p people did enjoy it, but it was it was pretty crap. So they didn't make they didn't make a bad game about a good TV show. Fact. All right, forget forget movies and TV shows because clearly they made some crap on the licensed front, all right? But all original ideas were top notch, right? Now, if you are asking what in the surely not in ocean software name is this, this, my YouTube friends, is the oddest f***ing game Ocean ever released, and quite possibly the dullest, but we'll come back to that. Maelstrom, which I can only presume is a play on words on Maelstrom, meaning a powerful, often violent whirlpool sucking in objects within a given radius, is a game about a vigilante postman from the year 2000. I say vigilante, but I'm not entirely sure. His name is Michael Nasty. I'm sure he had fun times at school with that name. And since the last of the oil dried up in the North Sea, anarchy has reigned in the United Kingdom. Criminal gangs rule the roost at the dawn of the 21st century. But that doesn't stop Mike from trying to deliver the post and killing anyone who tries to get in his way. You seem to be the last postman standing, being the last outpost, the last postie, the last bastion of hope. You need a decent van. Although it very much looks like Postman Pat's van, child friendly it ain't. Just look at Mike's face when he's driving it. Shit is getting real. Turbo boosts, pillar box machine guns, and other surveillance equipment are the order of the day for our van. Named Skit, insert Knight Rider clip here. All these weird gadgets, you think they'd give you a radio? What would you like to hear? What the hell was that? It stands for Special Knowledge and Information Terminal. It is very sophisticated and keeps you fully up to speed as to what's required, although it can't spell Michael. Ooh, what's this? How do I pick it up? Ah, there you go. And if I press it again. Ah, it puts it down again. Right, I've got it. Oh. Thanks, Skit. Okay, so the van moves a bit slower than I was expecting. I mean, look at the chap walking next to me. He's almost keeping up. So when you start the game, there is small amusement experience number one, when you blow up your first post box. Get your first weapon attachment and use it to open a second post box. Small amusement experience number two.
run over a stupidly annoying pedestrian? Small amusement experience number three. And after that, it's uh, drive, open post box, 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 touch stranger, Ugh. which apparently hurts. Stop at the hospital, get better, drive, open post box, drive, open post box, drive, open post box, drive, open post box. Small amusement experience number four, picking up a large sack, dropping it off and picking up letters to deliver. You then get a bunch of numbers lit up at the bottom of the screen of the houses you need to deliver letters to. So now the game goes, drive, open post box, drive, deliver letter. Drive, open post box, drive, deliver letter. Now this is all fine, but there are three fundamental issues which we will explore now. Number one, the menu system continues to confuse me every time I use it. My brain wants to click out to get out of the van, which is actually a back button for the menu system. Van gets you in the van, but BOV gets you in the back of the van. The other buttons are fairly pointless. One shows your health, which doesn't really matter. And the other one, which are supposed to be dog paws or something, is you've guessed it to pause the game. Yep. Fundamental issue number two. It's so f***ing slow. I mean really slow. I actually increased the speed on my emulator to two times speed, which made everything, apart from the menu system, 10 times better. There is a speed attachment you can use on your van, but it's clunky to use the menu as you drive along, and then you miss an address or a post box because you can't click buttons fast enough. Fundamental issue number three. It's so goddamn boring. My kids sometimes enjoy dry toast. Dry toast is more enjoyable than this. Now, in its defense, I'm playing this as I reach my 50th anniversary of staying above ground, and 12-year-old me might have been more involved in the whole postman role-playing exercise. I do remember playing Paperboy in such a way. It was a real street with real people who I was invested delivering papers to. It was more than just an arcade game. This may have been the same here. I might have mapped this out, making a note of where everything is in this wraparound road that seemingly goes on forever. Spent time hanging around the pub or the hospital, making up stories of who lived where in this fantasy land I had created in my head. Games got better at blurring the line in what you had to imagine to improve it. Bearing in mind this came out at the same time as Great Escape, an ocean masterpiece, well Denton Designs really. But in that game you could even let your character do the role playing all by itself. The immersion was real, I was in the prison camp. I could play for hours just living in that world without having to add too much to the experience to make the experience a better one. So that's not to say Maelstrom is a bad game, but playing it now in the future, it certainly feels like one. As a structured game, it doesn't really do much. Magazines were generally on the same side of the fence. My, what a strange game this is, and to see Ocean publishing it is twice a surprise. Maelstrom is a very simple game to get into but has nothing to keep any self-respecting gameplay attached for any length of time. The way the game is presented is quite good with a redesigned character set and a nice screen layout. The graphics are small and rather dull. A very basic game at a high price. And they only gave it 59%. Hmm. Interestingly, the three out of five stars that Sinclair User gave the magazine were given by none other than ex-England football manager, Graham Taylor. Actually, he would have been Watford manager at the time, wouldn't he? What a legend. Anyway, he made his feelings very clear on the game. Oh, fuck it. 
Do I not like that? There is no ending seemingly. A four hour long play exists on YouTube where someone gets to day 10, but it doesn't really end there, but their sanity must have been tested somewhat. It's just odd. It's like the developers had an idea and ran with it without giving it too much thought about the end experience. It feels crazy looking at Ocean's catalogue that they went for it. It just doesn't fit. Ocean produced some absolute bangers and when time constraints hit license titles or money was stretched, they produced some utter dog shit too. I'd love to know the story behind this game. How did these two lads convince Ocean to publish this one? Even the glorious artwork, which is possibly the best part about the game, was a one-off piece for any Spectrum software by the illustrator John Haslam. This wasn't ported to any other system and eventually ended up on a cover tape cassette on Sinclair User some three years later, which I presume is where most people found the game. Bizarrely, it was also bundled with the Spectrum Plus 3 on a disc with some other interesting titles. It doesn't really show what the system can do, does it? Ocean's Oddest Game? Maybe. It certainly doesn't fit with my experience with Ocean games, and this would have perplexed me back in the day. But then again, I never played Cosmic War Toad either. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.